Hmm. Long watch poles or rusted wood. More importantly, we need to level up these two bastards. Maneha. Two weapon user. Fine, 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 fine. Balance and two slashing weapons. Two weapons versus no weapons. Light armor. Frequently worn by practitioners of unarmed combat, this outfit is light and durable. Another light armor. Plus one move speed, plus 25% healing disease. That's actually quite nice because he, she is gonna take hits. Fine. Okay. Miss Barbarian. Mm, athletics and survival. I want the accuracy bonus versus creature type at the very least. Um, we don't. Uh, especially from the barbarian, we don't want to be too defense focused. Uh, defense needs to be at the very least favored. Faster endurance recovery. Passive. Oh. Okay, let's look. Accurate carnage. Uh, improving accuracy of secondary attack from carnage plus 5. Barbarian blue. Additional crits and extra damage on crits. Carnage is not effective. One per encounter. Full attack. 30 plus 30% 30 of hits convert to crits. Extra critical damage multiplier. Nuanced Faith of the Gods has allowed this character to unleash a wave of spiritual energy similar to the priest's holy in, in holy radiance. Except this seems to be weaker. Apprentice's sneak attack, so sneak attack but weaker. Character has attuned themselves to the natural world like a druid and is able to focus its power on an enemy with the efforts of nature's mark spell. Or probably again weaker, so it sort of has uh, secondary abilities that you can rely on. Fledgling Cypher, except weaker, right. Gallant focus. Paladin zealot focus except weaker probably. Monk except weaker. Hedge wizard. Summon, uh, mimic summon ability of the Chanter, Ranger, Fighter. Right, uh, these two are the only barbarian abilities. Accurate Carnage, plus 5 accuracy on secondary hits from Carnage. Carnage, I think, is the ability where, where you hit a target, uh, close by targets around that target get secondary hits. So that's called carnage. They would be more accurate. Accurate hits do more damage. Oh, I'll take accurate carnage. Although, do we have weapon focus? Doesn't look like it. Right, what exactly do we use as weapons?
Morning Star. Right. So we have a two-handed weapon and one-handed weapons. We that doesn't matter. We have probably uh, exceptional quality weapons of every, every type at this point. But that has to be taken. Plus six accuracy on all weapons. Not sure what we would like. Knight seems like a solid choice. So the soldier. Great sword is a nice weapon. We need something two handed. This would have two powerful range weapons too. A pike and a warhammer. Yeah, I'm not sure which is better. Uh, one handed weapons or two handed weapons. Sabers. We're gonna go with one handed weapons. Sabers are great. But this lacks the two handed weapon. Hatchet, spear, hunting bow, dagger, rapier, mace, scepter, rod. And the knight is actually quite nice. Battle axe, sword, and the morning star. Soldier would be okay too, I suppose. Uh, take the goddamn knight. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just we have a lot of level ups too, so I'd like to get a move on on this. Athletic survival combination for her. Maybe some stealth added. Okay. Frenzy. Once per encounter. Plus 4 might, constitution, plus 33% attack speed, minus 10 deflection, health and endurance concealed for 14 seconds. So, extra offensive capabilities. Re reduced defense can't see your health. Barbarian channels his or her own irrepressible determination, regenerating a large amount of endurance once per encounter. Mm. Mm. Blooded. Plus 25% damage while endurance below 50%. Plus 3.5 move speed, plus 12 defense when disengaging, not stopped by engagement, or this would be good for positioning your guy. I think I'll take the frenzy. Once per encounter attack boost. Right. Where to go from here? Do we want stealth? The stealth would be mainly useful, I think, in those uh, text adventure portions. Athletics and survival are useful uh, outside that too. I'd like to push survival to very close to 10. That's, that, that is going to be very expensive. Greater Frenzy. Additional bonuses while under effects Frenzy. Plus 2 Might and plus 2 Constitution. Barbaric Blue. Um. I'll take accurate carnage for now. A greater frenzy. Accurate carnage. <sighs> Blooded. Brute force. 
attack fortitude instead of reflection if fortitude is lower. So this might be good against spirits. I'm not sure if it's good against anything else. I suppose it might change if you can lower fortitude somehow. But that's not going to be that many opponents. One stands alone. The Barbarian makes a courageous stand against all attackers. Grants a melee damage bonus when the Barbarian is engaged by two or more enemies. And the Barbarian cannot be flanked unless engaged by more than three enemies. Passive. Bloodlust. Lost 20% attack speed for 9.2 seconds. Impart an unquenchable blood loss to the Barbarian, increasing his or her speed temporarily in battle once he or she has them personally downed at least two enemies. Uh, great if you solo the guy, but uh, two enemies by a single guy in a fight is quite a lot. I still think the one stats alone might be good, because it you could sort of tank with this without him getting into too much trouble, and he could, uh, she could actually kill stuff too. You never know how things, these things are gonna go. So one stance alone. New weapon style plus twenty percent attack speed. Graces converted to kits plus fifteen percent damage. I'm not sure which is the best method of fighting. There's a inherent advantage on using just a heavier weapon, because every heavily armored target is not gonna give two shits if you have uh, two weapons that do slight damage. But two-handed weapon will do a heavier damage, and plus 15% to that damage will again more damage that goes through the target itself. I'm thinking of taking the two handed weapon style. I mean, we're gonna have a sword and shield guy. Well, uh, actually, we don't. We don't. I'll take the two handed style. Your entire reason to exist is to just do damage. Um, maybe not now, but. Shit. Greater Frenzy. We're gonna. We intend to use the Frenzy quite often, so the better it is, the better it is. Alternatively, sneak attacks. And it's a passive ability too. 15% extra damage on all attacks if you can just do some kind of sneak attack. Ugh, take the Greater Frenzy. I'm going to exit this for now. My problem is that I, I'd like to see our equipment a little bit. I mean, what type of weaponry, for example, do we have? Do we have good two-handed weapons? Do we have great one-handed weapons? What exactly would I want? So... We're probably looking at unique weapons. I mean, I can always enchant a normal weapon to try to handle things more or less. Unique rod. We shouldn't be stroking that. A stock is not something we will have focused on. Let's 
swords. This is uh, against spirits. Quarter staff, club, polax, sword, one handed. Damage resistance bypass. Well, that's something, uh, I suppose. Edge of Reason. Critical Multiplier. Damage restored as Endurance. That would be basically you can heal by attacking. And it's a superb weapon anyway. Good, good. Don't have that many unique weapons. Sword. Plus in accuracy when below 50% endurance. Plus 20% damage while endurance below 50%. Accuracy granted to an ally attacking the same target. Plus 25% corrode damage. Accuracy against beasts. Exceptional. Another potential one. Uh, we don't have maces. We do have a morning star capability. Damage restored as endurance. Corrode damage. Fine. We could enhance this. We could. And the attack speed is slow. Does a lot of damage. We are gonna need two sets of weapons anyway. And that's pretty much our options, anywho. Right. We have me. Uh, not sure what type of armors we would want. We 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 don't want a gigantic recovery speed because we are all about sling stuff. Plus mine, superb damage reduction. I mean, we have a light armor now. Increases the healing received, so I wonder if it affects this healing received too. We shouldn't have many unique armors. Grants Frenzy when hit by critical, okay. Zolve, Retaliation. Second chance on unconsciousness. Don't plan on being unconscious. Reflections against range attacks, damage reductions. Right, that's pretty much it. So, the armor she has is just fine. And there's the now uh, this is us massive massive problems. Right, we have two weapon sets. We're going to replace them with these no matter what. We'll see if we can enchant them. Right, she has nothing. Maybe I should take two weapon style and the one handed. This uh, this morning star isn't anything special. I mean, it barely does any uh, more damage than the two weapon style. Accuracy is better with these two. Why? I don't know. At least I can level things up.
blood attack fortitude instead of deflection thick skinned plus 2 damage reduction slash pierce and crush the barbarian's mere presence becomes so intimidating as to fill all approaching enemies with nauseating dread as long as the barbarian is stationary, nearby enemies may be sickened. Fortitude and will are reduced by 10. Attribute reduced by 1. So this could work potentially fairly well with uh, similar abilities. Weakening, sickening, with the uh, attack fortitude. After killing an enemy, the barbarian's recovery is waived, allowing them to attack again immediately. Hmm. This could be useful against multiple opponents. I mean, if they, they already damage everything around them, so it could potentially pile up attacks on top of attacks. I think I want to take the attack fortitude instead of deflection. Fortitude lower. I don't think this is going to be used all that much, but I, I'm sort of curious how much. Right, we need uh, two handed style. Two weapon style. We probably I actually want to take both. I'll take the two weapons pile first. Vengeful defeat. Exacts a final revenge when the barbarian is reduced to zero endurance. Yeah, I don't want to plan on that. You can terrify targets. Right. After killing an enemy, the barbarian's recovery is waived, allowing them to attack him immediately. Right. A threatening presence automatically sicken opponents that are near us. Automatic debuff on anyone nearby. So they're more vulnerable to your attacks. They are central to everything you do. In survival should mean we can take tier 2 accuracy bones versus a creature type. Once per encounter, messy blue. Um, no, I'll take the two handed, but well, two handed style plus 15% damage. Right, more athletics, be still. Survival and Athletics, I think, uh, although we have no one with stealth now. Heart of Fury Barbarians wings viciously in a lightning quick flurry, taking on all comers. Each equipped weapon attacks n every nearby enemy, doing extra damage and inflicting carnage if appli applicable. Does this basically mean you use your weapon to attack every target near you and every hit basically will cause an extra secondary hit on everyone nearby? That's sort of a 
you're surrounded by enemies and you can basically uh, ravage them with a single strike. Eye of the Storm cannot be engaged by enemies more than one level below sail. The Barbarian cannot be engaged by enemies that are more than one level lower than him or her. It does not prevent the Barbarian from being attacked in the life. Engage. Does this mean they, they don't basically tie him down? They can still fight her, but they can't get the attacks of opportunity in the life. Passive damage reductions. I'll take the heart of fury. Once per rest is very limited, though. Bloodthirst. After killing an enemy, the barbarian's recovery is weak. I think I'll take this because it's passive and we would be able to take advantage of it on a regular basis. Not sure about the difference it'll make. I should take a different weapon focus. Uh, S-Stocks would be great, 200 weapons if we want to attack something heavily armored. The maze is nice, but it's frankly not that interesting. So adventure. Whole axe S stock flail wand warbow. Savage attack would be an attack mode we could use. Plus twenty percent melee attack, minus five melee accuracy. So if you don't have a super hard target, it might be better to just take the extra damage. By attacking with unbridled ferocity, characters are able to sacrifice melee accuracy for a significant boost in damage. The problem is usually the top opponents are the problem, and against top opponents it, they're very hard to hit in the first place, so you wouldn't sacrifice your accuracy. And trash are always beatable. I sort of want the A stock, ex especially because if we have to go against hard targets, they're gonna have fantastic damage reduction, and we don't really care about the health recovery. We want to do as much damage as we can with the hits. We want to buy bass damage reduction resistance. So I'm taking weapon focus adventure. All acts have been somewhat interesting too, so I think it will be fine. That should be the last level. Right. Because this only really has the damage restored as endurance. I think there was at least one Polax and a stock. A decent amount of damage, slashing and crushing. Plus 20% damage against prone stunned flanked enemies, plus 10% of hits converted to crits. So more of a offensive thing, but that's again I want the penetration. 
guess this is what I'm thinking of the Drake's bell. Unique Estoc. Damage piercing, 5 damage resistance bypass, plus 3 damage reduction burn. Accuracy against beasts, 3 damage resistance bypass. So I suppose total bypass is either 5 or 8. This is an anti dragon or anti drake sword. Which is probably more or less what our top, op top opponents would be anyway. Dragon fights don't come uh, unannounced though. Leveling up the monk. I'll have to look at the equipment situation more carefully after we've leveled up. I mean, I have to at the very least upgrade the equipment. I, I should have enough stuff to do that. Right, you have nothing. Plus ten percent ability area effect. I wonder if that affects the normal attacks you do. Athletics, dexterity, immunity to stock. Sounds interesting. Reception, restore light endurance. No, no, no. Offensive abilities, please. Might and Resolve. Sounds good to me. Defense against Push. Plus 3 Might. And Watchful Presence. Great Boots. Defense against Prone Attacks. Defense against Push Attacks. Need another Ring to. Swap Endurance. 100 Endurance Transport from the Caster. No! Plus 10% Ability Area of Effect. I don't think these stack. I mean, they, they come from the same source, more or less. So, they don't stack. Grand Suppressed. Cloak, damage reduction, burn, and shock. Signed affliction. Not sure what we even sh want to take. Endurance, all defenses, damage reduction, slash pierce. Hmm. Are we missing something? The bells. We are missing at least one ring. They're all the same.
plus 3 resolve. Plus 5 all defenses, plus 9 deflection, that seems to be a different ability, it seems to be stacking. Not expect that. Boots. We need to pair boots. It doesn't particularly matter what it is, probably protection against proning and the like. Things against prone and push attacks. Extra damage to flank targets. Ooh, three jolting touches. Right. Right, right, right. And we'll have to enchant the uh, items later. And the monk. I have no idea what to do with the monk. I mean, at least with the barbarian, I can sort of see where it's supposed to be going. But with the monk, I think it's uh, deflection based. So. I guess we might as well start with the survival part. Yeah, the same class specific shitty abilities. And then. these. But we probably want unarmed focus, don't we? So, weapon focus peasant. Swift strikes. Requires one wound. Plus 25% attack speed for 10 seconds. Passive. Plus 5% burn damage per wound. That might be useful. Uh, because I, I probably don't always have the time or inclination to use all the wounds to cast special abilities. This would still use the wounds that are gathering up to do extra burn damage. So it, it never goes to waste, even if you don't use the special abilities. It's always providing some kind of benefit for you. The monk immediately inflicts enough raw damage on himself or herself to gain a wound. Uh, no thanks. Lowers the monk's wound threshold, allowing him or her to gain wounds at a faster rate. Minus two wound threshold. Right. Um, not sure why I want something like that. Might be good, but I, I don't know. Also, I'm not sure how these are treated as weapon styles, as far as unarmed com combat is concerned. Um, I do want the character attacks from a defensive posture is if needed. Is that really what I want? Can't I take Maybe lesser wounds, the wound threshold thing. The problem with the unarmed is that you probably want some kind of weapon focus at some point in order to just do things. But surely there has to be a way to for your unarmed combat to improve. Surely.
plus 15 points in interrupting. Hmm, I suppose we can always take the apprentice's sneak attack. I'll take the cautious attack. This is uh, this sort of allows me to act as a tank. Anything to improve improve deflection. Deflection is not tied to the armor type, and this seems like we're half naked fighting all the time. So as we need the deflection, since we can't rely on the armor. Still, how is unarmed used? Fifty-five. Uh, you have two attacks, so it's probably two weapon fighting. Damage is quite high. Do you have any weapon boxes? Isn't hatchet, spear, quarter staff, hunting ball. Soul mirror. Fifty percent chance to reflect range attacks. Okay. Only attacks resulting in a miss have a chance to be reflected. Minus fifty percent duration for hostile effects. We can push and prune a target with wounds. Stunning blow. Two per encounter. If successful, stun for three seconds. A head targeting strike designed to disrupt enemy's ability to react. Enemies hit by successful attack are stunned. Yeah, this uh, disruption uh, effect would be the main thing there. I think I want passive abilities where I can get them. Uh, simply because it, I, I don't want to constantly be babysitting these things. I'm just being, I think, fairly honest with how I'd like to play these. So, I, I usually at least don't want to spend too much time on each individual guy to use their ability. Two weapon stock. Dual duality of mortal presence. Mortal ability. The monk gains two mortal abilities to allow him or her to switch between a bonus to deflection and a bonus to all other defenses. Plus eight deflection or plus eight all defenses except deflection. Generates a shockwave around the monk each time he or she gains a wound, inflicting a small amount of damage to and possibly calling an interrupt on all enemies in the area of effect. Okay, every time you get hit, you might interrupt. The monk becomes capable of protecting force from his or her fists, inflicting damage at long range. Long pain fists. For 30 seconds. Requires two wounds. Okay. Reflect range attacks. Ah, uh, I'm sure it's fine. One wound plus twenty five percent attacks for ten seconds.
temporary insight into endurance, gaining a temporary bonus fortitude reflex and will whenever a hostile effect expires. They will become more resistant to effects once they go down. I'll actually take this. It'll be harder to stick another effect on you. And it's a passive ability. Superior deflection, passive plus five deflection. Innervating blows. By targeting certain points of an enemy, the monk is able to inflict physical weakness. Melee critical hits cause target to become weak and passive ability. Might and Constitution reduced by 2, Movement reduced by 1, Fortitude and Will reduced by 20. So, Monk Barbarian combination could potentially work fairly well too. I'll take the Innervating Tools. I have no idea what's a good combination. So, this could be a terrible, terrible build that I'm making. What are you gonna do? Penetrating shots. Vulnerable attack. Minus attack speed plus 5 melee damage resistance bypass model thing. I sort of want this because I'm not sure how well our fists are ever gonna penetrate shit. But against a tough target like that, this could be very, very valuable. I suppose this is a bit of a troublesome thing, because frankly, you don't know what is going to be useful and what isn't until you finish playing the game. Legoland's Path Monk streaks towards a distant target, inflicting terrible crush damage and penalties to all defenses on anyone in his or her path. Three wounds. Plus one damage reduction per wound. Okay, that seems like a good survivability thing. Yeah, I think I'll take that. Plus one damage reduction per wound. Not, it's not gonna keep him alive in a top situation. But it's a passive ability that keeps you alive a little bit. How valuable that ends up being, I don't know. At this point, the wound threshold lowering is starting to be good. I think because we have uh, at least a couple of abilities that are passively taking advantage of the number of wounds we're gonna get. So the easier we're gonna get them, the better it will be. I frankly don't see anything particularly interesting anyway. So, lesser wounds. Sixty four defense, one hundred sixteen defense, right? Twenty five, sixty six. So this is sixty four without basically anything. The fists are doing uh, fairly good damage at this point. There has to be some kind of passive ability that increases the 
they're fairly accurate to I mean we we have to look at the fighter is basically equally as accurate and it's with a single weapon this is uh, with two <sighs> the big worry is the lack of defenses I'm giving him the potion wizard's double plus 40 to deflection until he's or critically hit. Because he doesn't have an armor really. He has nothing. <sighs> we might have a light armor. Plus two might damage reductions. This is at least somewhat useful. Um, and we'll go with this. It's only better than the armor he has now. Right, sort of fitting anyway. Martial arts master type of thing. We should have a healing potion somewhere. Am I just not spotting them or what? I think yellow is heal. No, yellow is recovery. So, blue is heal? Damage reduction. Purple is heal? What the fuck is heal? We don't have great healing potions. Prevent death. Ah. Regeneration. Uh, regeneration. So purple is definitely heal. Potion of major endurance. Do have two weapons, hatchet and a saber. Might as well switch to two sabers. Although I'll try the unarmed for now. The higher damage on those will at least compensate for the lack of attack bonuses and the like. I, I don't think they'll fully compensate. We have a weapon focused on we? Hatchets. Hatchets. Yeah, two hatchets basically. <sighs> I think we have at least one unique hatchet, although I might have just thrown them away. Don't think I had much use for hatchets once upon a time. This is why I had the general rule of... Uh, they might be on someone else that's not on the team at the moment. Or uh, functioning as a backup weapon or something like that. I'll just take two regular hatchets and uh, see if I can upgrade those. If I can find some hatchets. There's a hatchet. A fine hatchet. Do we have something better? Fine hatchet. It would be great if I wouldn't have to waste too many resources on uh, upgrading regular hatchets. No? 
I've gotten rid of most of the hatchets. Yeah, probably a long time no one's using them. I doubt I would have gotten rid of a unique hatchet though. That is very unlikely. Someone else has them. Right. Give me hatchets. Extra 10 points in defense. Damage is massively lower. Right, anything else? Defense against push attacks for three might. Damage to flank the bones. Survival and constitution. Transpireball, eight charges from me. Defense against charm, confused, dominated constitution. Mm. Grants recall agony. Thirty percent of all damage reapplied over twelve seconds. Once per rest, this could be useful. Overwhelming wave when hit by a critical hit. Crush damage stun. At least it has some potential. Plus 15 defense when disengaged. Damage reduction, firebrand. Perception, Restore Light Endurance, Deflection Bonus, yay, please give me Deflection Bonuses. Well, we don't, we have like one extra magical hat, do we have even, I'm not sure even we have proper boots. Minor damage reductions, extra damage to flank targets, sure, why not, take something. No good rings. I suppose, I'm pretty sure the extra guys that are not in the group are gonna have something useful. Ability, area of effect, bonus, sure, why not. Suppress affliction, better than nothing. And our only hat, constitution and survival benefit. Don't look bad at all. How well this all functions is a different matter. Uh, I don't think this is a good uh, rope for us to use now. In special situations, that's wonderful, but frankly, I, I don't think I would really take all that much advantage of it at the moment. There was the clock that allows us to move without, yeah, plus 15 defense when disengaging. It's probably more realistic and useful for us at the moment. We are getting planking bonuses for the boots, for example. That would help with the flanking. Right. Right. 
Oh, here yeah, the equipment upgrades. Ugh, fuck. Pine money has armor. Six enchantment left. Proofing. Maybe we should. Uh, We lack the proper gemstones. Right. Um, Adra Dragon Scales. Yeah. Ooh, legendary. Bog Dragon Scale. Well, I'll raise this to exceptional for now. I think I'll leave it at that. We could add some kind of proof into it. I'm not sure what would even be something we want. So uh, I'll let it go. This is probably fairly good to begin with. Yeah, it has a little bit of uh, extra space to the left, but not much. Doesn't have more than previously. I think we will have like two extra points of. So it was 11 slash 12 previously without the expansions or DLCs. Now it's 11 slash 14. Hmm. Has this been a general change in all equipment? Be sure we could. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. So you have room to improve upon your existing equipment. Right. Okay. Right. We upgrade the weapons. Superb training axe. We probably want this to do as much damage as possible. Burning or freezing? I think freezing would be a popular thing here. I mean, with the frozen landscape and all. Bug Dragon would seem uh, to indicate to me that corrosive damage might not be all that useful here. How about shock damage? I think I'll take the burning. Gotta take something. Not putting the slaying property in these now. Just want to get some basic enchantments going. This has everything. It can be upgraded to superb. Do I want to use the Sky Dragon Eye on this? It's a good weapon already. Exceptional. I don't think so. This hasn't really been enchanted at all. Not putting any slaying properties in these. Wilder might be a good cho choice. That, well, beasts or wilder. Let it go for now. These are horrible hatchets with nothing in them. I'm not making them superb, I'll, I'll add the basic exceptional enchantment to them. And shocking? Gotta add something. Yay for us! Jesus fuck, that took a long time. Hmm. Might as well change the party. Yeah. As you step outside the heavy wooden door of the temple, Sam, shut behind you. You hear someone barring it from the other side. Sounds like the priests have engaged in an agitated conversation. You get the sense that they are discussing you, but you're also certain that the door is too thick to eavesdrop through. 
Although there may be other places nearby where you'd stand a better chance. Not a sound. Uh, how could you? I think the barbarian is our best chance if we have to eavesdrop. Wooden shutters of the temple's window, closed tight, muffle a set of voices coming from within the building. You can't quite make sense of the murmur, but cracking a shutter open would likely help. A rusty iron latch holds the window shutters closed. With care, you should be able to unfasten it without being noticed. Uh, who unfastens it? Carefully begin to lift the latch from its metal hook. Halfway there, the rusted iron resists with a screech. You freeze, listening to the voices in hopes of the priests didn't hear. The conversation continues uninterrupted. Pour oil on the latch. Do we have oil? You grab at the latch and apply just the right amount of oil, notching the metal until its rust gives way without sound. Carefully, you pull the window shutters open enough to let the voices flow through. You hear a man speaking, his tone agitated. You do that. Hope the mountains will do it. What if it's... His sentence cuts as if the man were speaking to all sides of the room. Suppose he tells them instead. What then? You recognize Lavda's voice responding. Why would he? And with the. Why would he? And with all those dangers near the battery, our gift bearer won't delay. I expect. The man interrupts her. You always expect. Look where that's taking us. A dying village. Ogres at the walls. Ixtl is not back yet, and now I have to do this. His voice drops and seeds, muffling what he has to say. After a moment, Lafda replies. Do you think I wanted this? That I could have known in advance? A pause ensues, its tension growing until the priest's voice cuts it in half. We can't wait for him. We must fish our, out our last batch, quickly. After that, we'll decide. Man responds in a broken voice, barely audible. You only distinguish distinguish the last words. That russet wood pod. I'll go. In exchange seems to end. Their exchange seems to end. Cautiously, you step away from the window of Andra's temple. Russet wood pond. Maybe we should head there first. Find the gift bearer or search the waters of the russet wood. Hmm. Now, what was I supposed to be doing? Ah, yeah, the formation thing. Doesn't really work for this group. Right. Um, this has to be a long range attack formation. Yeah. Right. We still clearly have our primary tank. I think secondaries. And fighter. We sort of have this formation though. I'd like to get the priest closer here. Uh, we need him to spot things anyway. And if he's at the center, he can easily buff everyone without too much fuss. Maybe someone to hold the rear. We'll see how this goes. We can always change it later. Uh, I want more or less everyone to have a clear path. Uh, 
I don't want a V formation of although a vanguard protection which makes a lot of sense. Uh, I want to hold at least some of these back because usually there's a initial fight and then uh, it starts pouring from both sides that that threatens the support casters. I want to have at least someone there to try to block that while these two can tank and attack at the same time. Barbarian held back mainly because she's probably a bit faster than the fighter and I, I would very much like the fighter to take the aggression if at all possible. Still, management done. Since we seem to have a reason to go to Russetwood, we probably should head to Russetwood first. Seems like if we wave, we're going to lose the opportunity to see what's going on. Akron has lost everything during the attack. Blah, 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 blah. To be cast away in secret. I, I listened to a private conversation between Laughter and her acolytes. Apparently, they worry for the safety of their gift bearer, Ixli, during his journey near Durgan's battery. The priests also spoke of something important to them that's hidden in the Rosen. I'm not sure if we should go to Russetwood then, because Ixley's uh, survival and safety is probably a higher priority. Jurgen's battery, everyone says go to Jurgen's battery. Slave hunter, somewhere to the west. Or not, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't mention anymore. Ah, uh, where did these go? Ethic Null. No, 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 this is part of the... This is not part of the, the White March. Right. Poker Matron. The Recluse Calvino in the White March. Right, I think in order for us to open Durgan's Batter, we probably have to go to the west or east side of these towns. We currently have a person to follow the Russet Wood. Poles would have some kind of a pearl and... I don't know if there's anything else of interest there. The ogres would also be in uh, Russet Wood. Either way, the Russet Wood Gurgen's battery choice seems to be something that's not relevant at the moment. At the same time, if I wait, I wonder if we lose an opportunity. What would I do? I would probably follow the person that's just left from the temple. That's what I would do. See what's, what's going on. What are they trying to hide? Ah, 